if your life you can go ahead and give your offerings now all right genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 verse 1 let's read genesis chapter 1 verse 1 2 3 together one to go in the beginning god created heaven and the earth continue and what happened and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep loud and clear and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light and God said let there be light in other words he said light be and light became or light came let's read from the amplified version very quickly say I love you Jesus All right, let's read one to go. In the beginning, God, Elohim, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, created by forming from nothing. You see that, right? He created how? By forming from nothing. I don't know what your life appears to be right now, but I know one thing for sure. Before this year is over, you will become the envy of your world. He formed from nothing what? The heavens and the earth. Continue. The earth was formless and void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Deep meaning what? Huh? Read that. It means what? That means there was an unformed earth covered by something. I'm not going to be teaching on uh, creativity now, but I just want you to pay attention to the power of creativity. That there's no situation that is so complex that cannot be converted into miracle signs and wonders. There's nothing that is so complex that cannot become what people will call the wonders of the age. There is no life. I mean, you look at yourself today. It's, I don't know how horrible things appear to be. But there is no life that is so useless that cannot be useful. If you employ the right ingredients and you go through the right medium. He said, the spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the ugly situation. God is never intimidated by what The Holy Spirit is such a powerful spirit that he likes to prove his ability over darkness or worst situations. It's the same spirit that God puts in man. When God made man, he made man out of the dust of the earth. He put clay together. And the clay looked 
like nothing, lifeless. And God grabbed the clay and released his pneuma, his wind into the clay and his spirit entered into that clay and the clay became a living fish, a living being. You might be looking at things so dry today in your life. Watch and see. The spirit of the living God will use you to bring life to dryness, to dead things, and to cripple things in the name of Jesus Christ. So look at the next verse, everybody. And God said, let there be light and there was light. And because of the light, look at verse 4. And God saw that the light was good. What is good? Pleasing and useful. And he affirmed and sustained it. He affirmed and sustained it. And God separated the light, distinguishing it from the darkness. So, light and darkness are distinguished. They no longer cohabit, and they can never cohabit. Are you with me? The, the evening, the morning was the first day, but God had to look and he said, this light is useful and what? Pleasing. Light is good. Say to your neighbor, light is good. Yeah, they may be far from you, but say far. Light is good. If you're watching, say to your loved ones, their light is good. Now, light is not just good. Light is pleasing. Say light is pleasing. And number three, life is, light is useful. Say light is useful. Say it louder, light is useful. God said, let there be light. And <laughs> there was light. Because of my time, I don't want to go into all the slight definitions. But I want you to know that light is good, pleasing, and useful. I know you may think that, well, good means pleasing and useful. No, they mean it might mean that, but it's different. They are all different things. Some things are good, but they are not useful. Some things are useful, but they are not pleasing. Am I right? Now, I know you don't have to lie, but how many of you have ever taken a medication that is bitter? <laughs> Chloroquine is very bitter. Is it useful? Is it pleasing? <laughs> Before you take chloroquine, you have to look for something sweet. You take chloroquine for almost five minutes. The, the queen has entered, but the queen is not going. Ah. And I, so you find yourself looking for something sweet to cover up that useful but unpleasing thing. So when you think about light as you think about your life and your future you have to know that this is good two this is useful and three it is pleasing. If you don't have respect for light, you will soon become a victim of the dark. Darkness 
that waste people. So, light, God saw that the light was good. And one day, in Exodus chapter 10, verse 23, Exodus 10, 23. Let's actually read Exodus 10, um, 21 to 23. 21 to 23. That's a story you can read later. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that darkness may come over the land of Egypt. Before you rush, I want you to understand that there are men and women that by virtue or who by virtue of their work with God are able to control the elements Determine the happenings in their generation. Let me tell you, child of God, God wants you to come to a place where, by virtue of alignment and covenant and relationship with Him, you are able to decide what happens in your world to your people. Others are looking for light. Yet God said there are those that are creators of light and darkness. Hear me. If you understand this, you won't walk with your head bowed. No witch at your workplace, whether they are witches that fly at night or witches that use their offices to oppress you. The reason why you are still struggling is because you don't understand this. If you understand what I'm saying to you, there is no boss, no supervisor, nobody can torture or torment you. Because I am Okomaya Kankankanka. All I need is for me to be well aligned and stretch my hand to the sky. And darkness will cover the individual. You're called to be a generator of light a provider of light but not light alone you are called to have ability to create darkness and light if something is torturing your life it's a very simple equation when someone Jesus said anyone that walk in darkness will stumble and it seems like your enemies are gaining momentum and they run fast and they are fast and they are, they are very fast and they are catching up with you. Raise your hand to the sky. Create darkness in their lives. And you will see. It's a simple spiritual principle. If they walk in darkness, they will stumble. So how do you slow satanic warfare and attack? Create darkness over your enemies. Don't say, I wish one day I'll be like apostle so I can create darkness. That's what apostle is telling you now. Are you with me? I'm telling you now. So don't say you are waiting for a day to be like me. You start today. <laughs> you start today. He says so that darkness may come over the land of Egypt. A darkness which is so awful that it may be felt you don't understand. <laughs> I, I think somebody's, I've seen some of you going like this now. I think somebody's like, hey, I can't wait for this service to be over. <laughs> Somebody's ready to tear a cool up. <laughs> a 
I'm telling you. <laughs> so you are, you'll be asking yourself, what is light then? Mm, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I'll quickly do that. But God said, in order to end the slavery of my people, you have to introduce darkness. But here's the thing. You are dealing with someone whose power comes from the dark world. 